Hey, Assalamu alaikum. Let's do it. Three days gap. I had to take this rest forcefully because uh, started feeling really unbearable pain that would trigger all the way from the bottom of my back and go all the way up to the neck and then I had the cervical problem and I just did not feel like sitting on the computer and uh, it was actually a blessing in disguise. The reason why I say so is because I realized what the major problem is. So I bought this new iMac uh, in January 2020. Been using it for last 12 months precisely, 13 months. Uh, well, that makes it that's make it that that's that's actually 15 months. Sorry for my bad maths, but I just got the number right. So I've been using this iMac for the last 15 months, and uh, I did not realize that actually I'm doing a lot of injustice to my neck as well as to my back because the camera on iMac is positioned stationary all the way on the top. So I have to constantly on my and I do a lot of live streams. Um, if I'm not live on this channel, I probably would be live on my main channel. If I'm not live on that main channel, I would probably be live on any of the Facebook group or a page or a profile. And then <laughs> I realize that every time I come live, I am actually looking at the camera that is above the eye level, above the eye level. And that's actually, it sounds obnoxious. It's very uneasy and over a uh, as you as you keep on doing it, it sort of like takes a negative toll on your body. And uh, I started hurting my back, I started hurting my neck, I started hurting my shoulders. Uh, so I thought it's better to, you know, uh, take some painkillers and take rest for three days. Honestly speaking, I wanted to come live uh, last night, but again, uh, around 8 p.m. That's where I realized perhaps one more day off but not at the cost of people. So uh, therefore, in my close Facebook group, I posted good news telling people that uh, we'll be extending this cohort three all throughout this week, which essentially includes the weekend as well. Now, the question is, what will we do uh, for the next six days? Uh, we have talked about freelancing, of course. Um, I think uh, Covered that in detail. We have talked about digital marketing. The first class was pretty self, um, you know. Uh, thank you for your responses because your responses sort of like add fuel to my uh, enthusiasm, to, uh, to my motivation. And uh, being, in, uh, you know, someone who actually fuels on uh, external motivation when people acknowledge you for the work you do, it sort of, sort of like, you know, uh, kicks you more to uh, continue doing this. And uh, I really, you know, I appreciate all those comments uh, inside those closed group, uh, as well as in the comment section of the live sections. Uh, so uh, then I thought hard about it. And then here's what I've decided. Monday and Tuesday, we are going to focus on digital marketing. And then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I'm going to leave Saturday and Sunday for Q&A because I'm sure you guys would have uh, zillions of questions already uh, you would like to ask me. So uh, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday are going to be uh, allocated, uh, set aside to recap everything we have done. So we're going to talk about freelancing, we're going to talk about blogging, we're going to talk about digital marketing. And uh, that's it. Let's see what happens. In the first class of digital marketing, in the first lecture, we covered the uh, importance of knowing your competitor, identifying your business related keywords that can be used on your blog, and then uh, how to write effectively without uh, overstuffing the keywords in your content and make sure that uh, you write it for humans as much as uh, you write it for bots. Of, of, of search engines, but primarily the content needs to be diversified. It needs to uh, focus on images as well as on videos so that uh, whenever someone uh, reads a blog post, it's, it's not just too dry. It has pictures, it has videos, 
And uh, uh, when people engage in reading your blog post all the way till then, naturally you are uh, getting a lot of uh, uh, watch time on your content. And in, a, in, in directly and indirectly, it encourages Google as a search engine to promote your blog post for your business related keywords because Google identifies your blog post as some uh, as, as something that is valuable. People are spending more than the usual time reading that particular blog post. They're spending time on that particular page because when they're reading, of course, they're on your uh, blog post on, 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 on the internet. And uh, if they take an action, uh, if they share your blog post on their social media accounts. You're sort of like uh, filling, in, filling in all the parameters uh, that are essential for increasing your ranking for business related keywords. So for example, if, if I have a blog post about freelancing and I talk about freelancing, how to start freelancing, I talk about do's and don'ts, I talk about types of marketplaces, I talk about uh, putting in re related pictures. Uh, I talk about, uh, in my blog post, I put in uh, the videos, perhaps, uh, uh, you know, more than one video. All of this would, in would encourage you to read that particular blog post from start till end. And if you like what you read, there's a good chance you may share the content on your social media platforms. You may share it on your Pinterest, you may share it on your Facebook, you may share it on your Instagram story, you may share it on uh, your YouTube by creating a video about it. So therefore, uh, you're giving yourselves a fair chance of making an impact for that particular keyword. And that's how I, I have scaled up my beingguru.com blog. And as a matter of fact, uh, uh, just day before yesterday, it was Friday, we, uh, as a board, took a decision of... Uh, removing around 700 blog posts from beingguru.com because we, we want to focus primarily on digital marketing now. We want to focus on freelancing.com. Seems to be our forte, seems to be our strength, and therefore we want to write more about our strength. So uh, in four years, we have achieved a domain authority for around 30, which is far less than I would have ideally liked. And the way to turn the tide around is to uh, innovate. And the innovation demands focusing on your strength, letting go of the content that's irrelevant and uh, your readers do not worry about um, giving it a read. Uh, they don't even click on those blog posts. So instead of uh, having those uh, unnecessary blog posts on your uh, website, it's better to let them go, delete them, and uh, in, in, in contrast, put the content people are looking for, uh, which means that if we do the keyword analysis correctly, and uh, if people spend a lot of time reading the blog posts on beingguru.com, uh, over a period of time, um, we are giving ourselves a chance of ranking higher for those keywords. So. Uh, over the weekend, I actually purchased the uh, premium package of uh, Uber Suggest. Uh, more on that in a in a moment, and uh, it's an it's an amazing tool. Not only it lets you search for your keywords, see their difficulty, um, see your competition, but it also allows you to check the backlinks of uh, your. your your, the keywords your competitor is ranked for on google.com. And then, of course, it's up to you to approach the websites that have given a backlink to your competitor and gently ask them to give you a backlink as well. How do we do it? So before we talk about Facebook marketing, before we talk about Instagram marketing, I would like to take 15 minutes um, and then uh, walk you through the process of not only identifying your business related keywords, but also identify your competition, how to see the keywords they are ranked for, and most importantly, how to see the backlinks. So once we identify the backlinks, perhaps we can go to those websites and uh, contact them and gently ask them to give us a backlink as well.
So it's, it's a manual process. It requires a lot of time, but that's how you build it. So if you're interested in knowing this, 10 eyes would do it. Drop in your eyes. If, meanwhile, I'll take a sip of my tea. And then I'll, depending on your eyes, I'll share my screen and talk about finding your competitor. Because if you find your competitor, if you know your competition, automatically you will not only uh, know your backlinks, but you will know the keywords as well. And it's a manual process, it's a tedious process, but uh, it gives you an outright chance of indexing well for the keywords. So uh, if I don't see eyes, uh, of course, I'll skip this part and I'll move directly to Facebook advertisement. Wake up, people. Seems like everybody's sleeping here. Hey, like the video so that uh, YouTube recommends this video to uh, other people who are on the platform right now. Thank you. Walaikum Salaam Prajwal. Good to have you here. So, we want to know our competition and the only way we can identify our competition as let me share the screen here no i'm fine no shot pretty good no problem someone good to have you here ibrahim what do you mean looking handsome i am handsome i've been working out on myself last week and it, it's it's eighth eighth day on a trot i haven't uh consumed any sugar uh, pretty much on no sugar so I'm gonna share my screen and take you to uber suggest there you go going full screen here yeah and I'm gonna lean back yeah neck pain it's pretty comfortable I mean manageable right now Now, if you look at my screen, I search for Uber Suggest, and uh, the first site I get here is Uber Suggest Free Keyword Tool. I click on it, and uh, I want to identify my competitor. So I want to see who ranks for the keyword freelancing. I search for the keyword freelancing. The first result I would see is the number of times this keyword is searched for on US Google. So the number of times this particular keyword is searched for in US Google, as it says, English United States, it's actually 110 times, 110K. Uh, it's not that difficult to rank for this particular keyword because the keyword difficulty seems to be fairly less. Anything inside 35, if you recall, uh, the first lecture about blogging, I, uh, from memory, I guess it was my very first lecture of blogging. We had two separate lectures of blogging. Anything inside 35 is, uh, you know, uh, it's just good enough. And SEO difficulty 70, it says it's pretty high, but then it depends on multiple attributes. So we're going to see how many keyword ideas we can drive from this parent keyword freelancing. So if I scroll down, there you go. The related keyword ideas. Uber suggests tells me that freelancing means is searched for 12,000 times in US. 22 is the SEO difficulty. It's easy to rank. Anything that falls in a green area is easy to rank. Freelance meaning, freelancing definition. Now, this freelancing work is something I need to work on. I just uh, identified this keyword when I bought Uber suggests premium account. And uh, I realized that there are so many keywords I can rank for um, uh, on, on beanguru.com. For example, when, I, when you talk about freelancing Upwork, uh, that's relatively an easy keyword, a very easy keyword with a SEO difficulty of 29. Anything that falls inside 35 is good to rank. 
freelancing for web developers. Perhaps I can write about this freelancing graphic designing jobs, freelancing jobs online uh, with a very uh, moderate or you know decent amount of volume. Twenty nine hundred times this particular keyword is searched on uh, Google English. And if I scroll down, uh, of course, the volume decreases. But at the same time, if I'm able to identify keywords that fall inside 1500 volume, uh, I can still rank them if I focus on these keywords in my blog post. So that's the first thing first. You need to know in digital marketing, of course, if you have a website or your client's website, and then you need to identify the keywords because only by identifying the keywords, you'll be able to, you know, uh, you'll, 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 you'll understand how to use these keywords on the website and give yourself a chance of getting ranked. Now, if I look for the competition on the left hand side, you see this tab competitive analysis. I click on traffic overview, keywords by traffic, top pages by traffic, and similar websites. All these four subcategories are very important. Starting with, uh, if I if I uh, go to traffic overview, there you can see that. Uh, if I know my competition, and I can actually know my competition very easily, I go to keyword analysis, I click on keyword overview, I click on freelancing, and uh, in each, you know, on, on the top it shows me the keyword ideas, it also shows me the uh, SEO difficulty for that particular keyword, and if I scroll further down, I get to see key content ideas. In this content ideas tab, Uber suggests is showing me all the websites that are ranked for these particular keywords. For example, here's, uh, here's uh, ryrob.com and it is ranked for 6,035 keywords. If I want to check all the keywords this website is ranked for, I click on the keywords tab, loading as we speak, and now Uber suggests will show me all the keywords this website is ranked for. It seems like this website is into same business as we are. Uh, it offers the same, you know, uh, business line uh, as as Bean Guru. And uh, these are all the keywords this website is ranked on. So they are ranked for uh, the keyword, how to start on freelancer. If I pick this, only for a discussion sake, I go to Google. I search for this keyword, how to start on freelancer. Let's see if I can find this website. And I scroll down, I scroll down and there you see 10 steps to start a freelancing business. Good enough. Let's just click on this particular link. Let's see what have they done here. It seems like a to-do list, a huge lengthy blog post that covers everything in detail about starting your freelance business. So if I were to beat this blog post, if I were to topple this business off for this particular keyword, surely, I have to come up with something unique, something different, and at the same time, more engaging. And I already see a loophole here. I see that this website has a mix of mixture of text and pictures, but they are lacking videos. Visual content is consumed far better than reading a lengthy blog post or uh, going through the pictures. So maybe if I give Bing Guru, uh, you know, uh, a chance of focusing on this particular keyword, I might just be able to outrank this website, ryrob.com for the keyword. What was the keyword? The keyword was how to start on freelancer. If I go back again by doing this exercise and copying the keywords on Google, I can see the blog posts that they are ranked, and then I can uh, 
click on the particular blog post to see what they have done. And now uh, my fair assessment is Rairop seems to have invested huge time in writing about different blog posts, covering freelancing in detail. And if I want to uh, rank beinguru.com for these keywords, here are the keywords, how to start on freelancer, how to start freelancing. Now, every keyword has a decent amount of volume. I mean, uh, how to start on freelancer. If I search for this particular keyword, and I go to the left hand type and click on keyword uh, overview. And then I search for this keyword to see how many people are searching for this particular keyword. Uber suggests tells me the exact volume 390. Pretty moderate, right? Very easy to rank. SEO difficulty is only 12. So if I talk about this particular keyword, uh, particular topic, uh, there's a good chance I can get rank. Now again, when I search for this particular keyword, not only Uber suggests shows me other keyword ideas, that's how you can scale up all the keywords. So you put in the keyword, search for it, and Uber suggests would give you the keyword ideas as well as the website that are ranking and top 10 results for that particular keyword. And same goes for all the other keywords, all the keyword ideas. So uh, perhaps if I search for how to start freelance work, Uber suggests will give me uh, different ideas uh, about this particular keyword. And then I can use them and create different blog posts. Here's a, here, here are my competitors. So Ryan Rob again, this website is ranked and I can see all the keyword analysis. Now, if I click on the keywords again, let's see what else they are ranking for. So this seems to be a Philippine site. This seems to be a different website, by the way. So I've, I'm, I'm searching for the for the keywords of marketingasia.com. And Marketing Asia is ranked for different keywords. Freelancer Philippines, Philippines Freelancer, Freelancers in Philippines. This way, by manually searching for keywords, you can identify different keyword ideas and you can also see how many websites are ranked for that particular keyword. And then you can click on the keyword section of a particular website and identify other keywords that website is ranked for. So that's the first thing first. Now if I go back to comp traffic overview, I type in beanguru.com. Now, Uber suggest tells me that uh, organic keywords ranked for uh, organic keywords ranked on beanguru.com and Google US are actually 5,762. Good, right? Uh, it also tells me that uh, I get around 14,708 organic unique visitors visiting my blog post. It also tells me that uh, in a competitive world where so many different websites have taken a hit uh, because of Google new bot update or algorithm update, somehow the content we have been writing um, took a huge search high because sort of like Google bots think that the content we write is organic, people are liking it, and therefore increase in the visits. So all of a sudden from 4,000 visits, we go all the way to 70,000 visits, which is three times higher than the actual number. And I can now take Binguru example here as the example of your competition. So you type in your competitor URL and Uber suggests will literally do an X-ray about a website. It will tell you uh, monthly traffic. It will tell you about domain authority. That's where I like it. it should be around 50. And uh, therefore, uh, we are going to uh, take practical steps in improving our domain authority. Then it also tells us the top SEO page, uh, top SEO pages my website is ranked for. So the highest traffic 
Factor is Z library. It brings in about 3,000 unique visits every single month. And there is the Wolf of Wall Street. And there is how to cancel an order on Fiverr, so on and so forth. So I get uh, to know all the top ranking pages for this domain name. Not only I get to see the top ranking pages, I also get to see the best keywords this particular website is ranking for. So Z library fetches in around 74,000 unique visitors every single month to binguru.com. Freelancing definition brings in 1,900, uh, 1,900. Then define freelancing fetches in 1,900. How to cancel order on Fiverr. These are all the keywords. Imagine if being guru is your competitor and you're searching for uh, your competitor's website and you want to know every single detail about uh, your website by identifying their keywords, by identifying their top pages, you can get a fair bit of idea uh, and then you can write better and rank your keywords, rank your blog posts, for example. Uh, again, falling back to the same example of beingguru.com, uh, I see that uh, the freelancing definition brings in 1900 unique visits. I rank at eighth position and it's pretty easy to rank. What are other keyword ideas I can drive from this parent keyword freelancing definition? And Uber suggests in the keyword ideas tab tells me all the keywords I can choose and write about. Not only it tells me all the different related keywords, but as a matter of fact, I can actually analyze all the different websites that are ranking in top 10 results for this keyword. So for example, if I go back to uh, keyword overview and I search for key freelancing definition, thought the spelling of the definition is wrong here. I think it's D-E-F-I, D-E-F-I-N-I definition, no, maybe. I think yes, yeah, freelancing definition. So if I search for freelancing definition, 6,600 is the actual volume here. I scroll all the way to the bottom. Uber suggests tells me that freelancing definition and all the related keywords, um, uh, you know, as a matter of fact, what is freelancers? Is search for, uh, is search more than the, then the main keyword freelancing definition and uh, this sounds music to my ears and I'm going to talk about what is freelancers. That's going to be my next blog post. And uh, by analyzing the keywords, it seems like uh, I don't have any, any, the domain doesn't have any page ranking organically. No, it seems like Uber suggests, Uber suggests still searching for, uh, for being good and I, I don't want to do it. So how do I, if nothing works, go for root of a domain name. I'm going to give it another shot. I go back to app.ubersuggest.com. That's what I used to do. When my windows would stuck, when I was a Windows user, I would just reboot it. Uh, I mean, I'm still learning how to use Ubersuggest. So it's still picking in my domain name and I want to remove the domain name from the search bar here get a detail and okay that's fine uh, there has to be a way to clear the search result I'm sure there must be a way to clear the search result that for some another day maybe <laughs> this is funny man keyword overview freelancing definition and I don't want to search for freelancing definition and then compare it for being guru. But anyways, you get the idea, right? SEO Explorer. So if I click on SEO Analyzer, I type in beingguru.com and I click on search result. It tells me all the problem the website has and you can manually fix it. So 
Uber suggests tells me that there are 133 critical errors on my website. If I click on view all, that's it. It tells me every, you know, not only it analyzes different blog posts, but it tells me the problem in these different blog posts. So 24 pages have low word count. Uh, and uh, that's impacting my SEO in a long way. So sorry for myself. We need to work and fix this problem. 56 pages with duplicate meta descriptions, giving me a good enough reason to fire my employees. Nine pages with duplicate titles. Now I'm getting exasperated here. 44 pages with a long loading time. And that keyword and that difficulty is hard. And it's uh, uh, it has a high SEO impact on my website. Now, again, I can also analyze the backlinks my website has earned over the years. So Uber suggests, tells me that I have around 10,426 backlinks and out of those 10,426 backlinks, 2,543 are no follow. So if I scroll down, there you go. I see all the websites are giving me the backlink. How about reaching out to them and requesting them to give us a backlink? Does it make sense, folks? Every single detail about a website, Uber suggests is one amazing tool. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not their uh, paid affiliate or, or, or their uh, you know, uh, influencer who's giving them a shout out, but honest to God, uh, truth be told, the more I explore this tool, uh, more I fall in love with this because it is so crystal clear, easy to use, and uh, it seems like the tool is built for a, uh, someone who is as naive as I am. And not only it uh, allows me to explore more opportunities um, with regards to finding keywords, with regards to identifying my competition, but it also tells me the about the problems my website has. And uh, of course, you can only fix a problem once you realize there is a problem. And without uh, uh, without the availability of a solid tool that shows you the problem your website is facing, and then you can fix those problems, and then only you give yourself a chance of ranking in top 10 results. This is Uber suggests for you folks. Did you like what, what you see? If yes, I'm going to finish my teeth. Exactly. I wrote wrong spelling, but I wanted to clear this from the search result. I'm sure there must be a way, but uh, I'll, I'll search for that particular way to clear the cache, uh, you know, in, in, in some other time. But it's it is an it is an amazing tool. Who cares about the competition, Bila? Uh, Who cares about the competition? If I were look at first place, if I if I was so worried about people knowing the art and beating me and throwing me out of the competition, I would not have thought about training, freelancing, blogging, digital marketing, and all of the other stuff I've been training on my YouTube. Well, I'm not worried about competition. As a matter of fact, I believe more you teach, more you share, uh, more uh, you know you are equipping yourself with uh, better knowledge. Is there anybody who's confused with the Uber suggest uh, tool using usage? Um, I would like to clear your confusions before I move to Facebook advertisement and of course talk about uh, Instagram. Is there anybody who's confused right now? Walaikum salam Raksar. Being a beginner, Muhammad Nushat says he understands, which is good enough. Hey, if you can like the video, I'll be grateful. Just give me, some, you know, that's, that's a reward and acknowledgement to the work I do. Okay, that's that. 
So far, so good. I'm going to go back to my screen here and see what else do we have here. Facebook, um, facebook.com. Everybody wants to learn Facebook. And Facebook is uh, one amazing way of reaching out to hundreds and thousands of your potential customers in the future because with 2.6 billion users, it is higher than the number of cars on the roads and planes in the skies all over the world. So what you see right now is my fan page. Let's just take a look at the organic insights. So I click on see all. There you see. In one week, I get around 1700 likes, 720k post reach. And how many followers? I get around 2,648 followers in one week. So if I uh, change this timestamp to 28 days, which essentially is a one month's time, I get around 8,797 page likes on my fan page and uh, about 19,000. No, it's not about it. It's actually over 19,000. So 19,161 followers precisely. Let's just take a look at the videos uh, and the engagement my videos get. So it's actually over 1 million, 1.6 million precisely in 28 days. That's the kind of uh, audience I'm able to attract. And uh, no complaints. And I don't spend a single dime. The reason why I don't spend a single dime is because I do not have to. My page has sort of like uh, grown in popularity over the years. And the only reason I see And why it has grown uh, exponentially tall uh, with regards to the popularities because I believe uh, I've learned from my lessons uh, the mistakes I've made in the past so initially I would uh, post pictures that I uh, you know that I did not own someone would come back throw in a copyright strike and I was screwed and that was taken as one negative point. Then I would put uh, someone else's video on beingguru.com uh, and uh, on the Facebook page of Being Guru. I would post videos of Jack Ma, Elon Musk, Bill Gates, because I thought people resonate well with such content. Uh, and they, they did actually. Uh, I mean, six of my videos have done over 1 million independently, uh, but only to find out that uh, once Facebook recognizes that uh, you're not posting enough original content, it starts beginning, it starts to begin, uh, it sort of like throws you down the drain and begins to penalize you uh, to, you know, uh, to do your disliking. But if you only put in the original content, so on my fan page, I've been only putting the content I own. And I'm getting huge, huge popularity and recognition and acknowledgement. So this post was uploaded four hours ago. And uh, so far, we got uh, 640K engaged, uh, uh, view, you know, uh, likes and shares and all this stuff. 74 people have shared it, 50 comments. My average post typically ends up doing over 1K. There you go. So this was posted six hours ago, 1.3 with 59 comments and if I scroll further down this post was uh, published in the morning 3.2k and, uh, and then uh, here's an interesting part I was so shocked to see the result here so if I scroll down uh, let's just take a look at the picture there you go on 19th March three days ago it was my wedding anniversary you can still see the boost post option. So I did not pay Facebook to promote and why would I do it? I mean, it's my personal picture and look at the likes felt like a celebrity. 18 K 
2.2k comments. Wow. And uh, that's where I realized the, there's a lot of burden on my shoulders now. I need to come up with a content that's informative, adds value in people's life. And uh, I sort of like do not have any liberty, not anymore, to put in whatever I wish or I used to do previously. I'm a very fun loving guy. As a matter of fact, on my Facebook profile, I still take the liberty and uh, post whatever I like, but not on my Facebook page anymore. Gone are the days. So uh, <clears throat> how do you scale up your Facebook presence? There are two things you need to realize about scaling up your Facebook presence. You got to realize that whatever content you put on your Facebook, you need to own it. Uh, no, newspaper and paper ads do not, uh, uh, you know, they usually do not attract copyright strike. So you're safe, Dr. X. Well, I see what you're doing. And if you're doing something wrong, of course, I will, I, will, I will gently highlight that problem. The problem is, for example, someone has taken a picture, a drone shot, uh, and then you uh, download that picture or a video and without taking permission from the original content owner, you paste that, publish that, and then post it on your uh, Facebook profile or page. Uh, you're asking for trouble because sooner or later, when Facebook algorithm uh, kicks off and it compares with a timestamp, so a same content is published in different Facebook profiles or Facebook pages, the only way Facebook can identify the original creator of that particular content is by looking at the timestamp. So for example, I published a blog post, I, I published a picture on my Facebook page. Uh, assumingly, I took that picture from my phone and then I um, posted that on my profile or page, whatsoever it is. The picture was taken in February and someone likes that picture and uh, they just steal it by saving it on the hard drive and then they upload it again. Uh, Facebook would, you know, they will, they will compare the timestamp. So February versus, let's say, April or May. Of course, February is the original creator. April and May is a copycat. And uh, the copycat naturally will get a copyright strike. That's how the algorithm works. So if you want to build your Facebook presence or Instagram presence for that matter, remember Instagram is a Facebook owned company. now. You need to put original content on your Facebook page and as well as on your Facebook profile. The reason why I say so is because every second month I receive a lot of strikes from Facebook and so far uh, I'm lucky enough to still hang in there and my profile is uh, not taken down uh, because of uh, numerous copyright violations I have made in the past but then I was so ignorant and uh, nobody told me about uh, uh, the importance of putting in the uh, original content so I would uh, occasionally uh, if I like something on someone else's wall I would save it and then uh, used to post that on my profile only to find out that a few years later Facebook sends me a copyright strike. Look, you copied this picture from Click Info official Facebook page. You copied this picture from PTV sports page and our uh, artificial bot has compared the timestamp and we, we identify that uh, you have reused this image without taking permission from the original content creator. So if you have a, a proof about reusing this, that particular content, uh, you, you can send us an email and we'll take the flag off. But if you do not have any proof and uh, you have ripped someone's content, then uh, you are taking a strike. And uh, to my knowledge, I think it's about uh, 15 strikes. So I've received around two or three strikes in the last six months. The algorithm has only got 
uh, it, it has become more active recently than it used to be. Uh, a lot of credit goes to Donald Trump for uh, for highlighting this important issue to Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. And uh, the elections, all the saga uh, the world saw uh, pivoting around the elections. Uh, Facebook and other companies have just become a little too cautious in uh, allowing people to uh, reuse someone's uh, content without their prior permission. And I think it makes sense as well. I mean, we live in a part of the world where we don't realize the importance of uh, originality, unfortunately. Uh, and it's a problem I uh, often come across uh, on, on Fiverr and other freelance marketplaces. So I would see my picture used as a good omen <laughs> on Fiverr profile. I'm sure you must have noticed that as well. On different Facebook profile, I see my picture. I mean, why would you put someone else's picture as your Facebook profile picture? But uh, we live in a part of the world where not much emphasis is paid in educating people about the importance of ethics um, and in morality. So therefore, ev everything works here. And uh, some get away with it and some don't. And those who don't, they get a copyright strike. They're flagged for uh, violating uh, someone's uh, toss, terms of service, uh, because they have ripped off someone's uh, content, reused it without their permission. So therefore, they get the flag. Uh, so my advice to everybody is, if you want to have a strong, if you want to build a strong Facebook presence, first thing first, focus on putting in original content. Because people like original content as well. The reason why my fan page has grown in popularity in the last year and so, uh, I've just shown you that I've got, I, I, I typically receive around like 9,000 followers every single month. 9,012 would be around uh, uh, over 100K in a year. With this pace, and uh, apply the formula of uh, three, uh, if the popularity increases, Perhaps I'll be able to hit the milestone of 1 million in the next three years on Facebook alone. And the reason why I'm able to build this presence is because of the original content. Uh, everything you see on my Facebook page. And I've learned my lesson from being guru and other Facebook pages I used to own in the past. And the reason why, um, <laughs> because I was unaware about, uh, about uh, the toss terms of service highlighting uh, the, the, the downside of uh, reusing someone else's content. So uh, I paid my price. Uh, and the, the reason why I say so is because if you go to Bean Guru's uh, business page, uh, the engagement is literally you know, good to nothing. It, it has uh, it decreased over years and uh, the reason why it has declined so quickly is because somewhere down the road, I believe Facebook has pinned me down for uh, uh, putting in the content that's not original uh, or reusing someone else's content without their permission. And uh, most likely, maybe since I do not uh, post a lot of original content, Facebook sorts of like... Uh, considers or begins to consider you as a copycat. So therefore, you get a copyright. Uh, so I fixed all these problems on my personal fan page. So therefore, the huge popularity, every single post uh, engaging in huge numbers. First thing first, if you want to build strong Facebook presence, you need to focus on uh, coming up with the content that's, that's all yours. Uh, original content weighs in a long way. And uh, be it picture, be it video, make sure the content is good, content is engaging. Tomorrow, we are uh, hoping to get a lot of engagement on, on our 23rd March content. Uh, it's again a voiceover recitation of a poetry I've done uh, using my own footages, uh, video footages, that is. And uh, originality counts in a long way, be it your personal or professional life. If someone tries to be original, uh, sooner or later, uh, they would uh, topple off their competitor. 
<laughs> that's how the world goes the second thing you need to worry about your facebook pages you need to connect your facebook page with your instagram account so if you uh, take a look at my screen and if i take you to the settings by clicking on the settings icon, uh, by the way, you need to scroll all the way to the bottom to see the settings icon. And then by further scrolling down, you'll be able to see the Instagram somewhere. And uh, there you go. If I click on the Instagram, automatically I have uh, integrated my Instagram account with my Facebook fa fan page. So in future, when, when the connection is made, whatever you post on your Facebook, page would automatically get would automatically get posted on your Instagram account if it is a picture it will uh, you know it will automatically get posted in your posts on Instagram if it is a video that's less than one minute long duration it will again get posted in uh, your Instagram account uh, right now Instagram does not allow a video of, you know, talking about the cross posting video over one minute. So if you put a video for around, let's say three minutes on your Facebook page, uh, that will not get posted uh, automatically on your Instagram. Vice versa. If you post something on Instagram in a story, it will automatically get posted in a story of your Facebook page. Interesting, right? So uh, linking your Instagram with your Facebook not only allows you to share content between two platforms, but also if you advertise on Facebook, the same post gets advertised on Instagram. So you're able to leverage on the huge diversified audience on Instagram uh, that probably uh, does not use Facebook. So giving you an example of my daughter, uh, she does not use Facebook. She just hits Facebook. And then I, as a blogger on, uh, who owns beingguru.com, I identified the reason and uh, it primarily comes from the West. People, uh, kids from Generation Z, the dot-com generation, they tend to use Snapchat, Instagram more often than Facebook or Facebook-owned companies. So uh, that, 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 that comes as a surprise that uh, Gen Z is using Instagram more than Facebook and they're using Snapchat more than Instagram for that particular matter, which actually is a point of concern for Facebook in the future because if people stop using Facebook, right now Facebook is around 2.6 billion users. And if that number decreases, and if the competition takes over, and uh, actually there are a lot of new startups alarming competition to Facebook and uh, coming up uh, as not only as a uh, first preferred choice for usage, but they are also, um, you know, uh, signaling, signaling huge competition to Facebook. One example is, Clubhouse. Not sure if you have used it. It's for iOS users only. Uh, not um, sure about the Android uh, uh, app, how soon it will be rolled out for Android users. But uh, even for iOS platform, Clubhouse has taken the world by the storm. And a lot of people are actually using Clubhouse. So if you are someone who doesn't want to appear on camera, if you are someone who wants to uh, converse in a voice only platform, uh, Clubhouse is a iOS app for Apple users that allows you to create room or join different rooms and engage in a conversation with voice only without you uh, appearing on a camera, which which makes sense. So if you're driving and everybody's got an internet connection, you uh, join a room and then you uh, involve in a conversation. That's what uh, Clubhouse um, is all about. And, uh, uh, you know, we'll discuss Clubhouse uh, in, in this digital marketing as well, because it makes a lot of sense to cover Clubhouse. Uh, uh, it is, it's a huge market out there. 
and one needs to um, pay close attention to this um, uh, you know upcoming trending app so now we talk about facebook so um, if you want to advertise on facebook imagine if i uh, want to advertise on my facebook fan page whatever i publish here would automatically gets posted on my instagram so i'm going to give you an example right now uh, you know 23rd march is our resolution day and uh, still 30 minutes away from heading 12 midnight but i'm going to take a liberty and upload the video we have because i wanted to show you how the cross um, uh, platform linking is done and uh, give me a second let me go through the WhatsApp message of my editor. And there you go. Just found it. Save. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload a video on my Facebook fan page. This would give you uh, a lot of understanding about organic outreach loading as we speak. Give me a second photo and uh, there you go next next and publish so it typically takes around five minutes for a video to get uploaded on your Facebook page so as this happens I'm going to appear on the camera again and uh, forgot to give a caption here Let's come up with an appropriate caption here. Give me a second, huh? خدا کرے کہ میرے عرض پاک پہ اترے وہ فصل گل جسے اندیشہ زوال نہ This is what I'm going to use. So I'm going to hit refresh and see if the video is uploaded. Because if it is, I'm going to put in uh, Yes, the video is uploaded. So back on my screen now. This is the video I've just uploaded. I'm going to click on the edit video, edit post. And on the edit post, I would, I will have to select a thumbnail. So for thumbnail, of course, I'm going to select flag here because it's the resolution day. And in the description of the video, that's what I should do. Uh, putting in a poetry. Save. How about, how about, how about writing this in Urdu? See if I can translate this into Urdu as well. So far, so good. There you go. Uh, I'm zoom in. خدا کرے میری عرض پاک پہ اترے وہ فصل گل جس سے this makes more sense yeah looks good I'm gonna hit the save button and this video will automatically post on Instagram profile as well and I'm gonna show you in a second 
hitting the refresh button just to make sure that the changes I've made have actually taken place before I leave the Facebook environment and go to Instagram. Somehow, internet seems to be very slow tonight. There you go. This looks pretty good. Look at the engagement. In two minutes, 55 people have already liked the video, four comments, and, uh, and, uh, and in two shares as well. Now, if I go to Instagram and see if this video is posted automatically on my profile as well. And uh, it seems like it will take a little time in posting the video. Or maybe perhaps this is some something I've noticed. Only the pictures get cross-posted, not the videos. Food for thought. So if you if I show you my Instagram profile, by the way, you can follow me on Instagram as well. My Instagram handle is handle is Hisham Server. These are the pictures I posted on my Facebook page. This one as well as this one. Um, <laughs> I, I can explain this picture. I mean, if you give me a chance, I can explain this picture. So um, I, I just came back from my meeting at, uh, and, you know, and then the guy was testing a new camera uh, gadget and <laughs> he stopped me there and then and asked me to pose. And only after the picture was taken and uh, one, when, when they uploaded it, on my page, I realized this looks so, so, so old school. But anyways, I'll live with it for now. <laughs> so on Instagram, it seems like only pictures get cross posted, not the videos. So therefore, on Instagram, I'll have to manually upload the video. But that's for, for, for the second part. And in, uh, in this lecture, I'm going to focus on Facebook and the engagement of Facebook and then, the, of course, the Facebook advertisement. So give me a second, loading my Facebook page and see if the post is doing good before I take a step forward. Danish, what would you like to ask me in an interview? And I wouldn't, I really, I really do not think there's anything I've not told people on my YouTube as well as on my other social media accounts. So this looks pretty good, right? And uh, now if I want to increase the viewership of this particular post, I can either advertise on Facebook or I can uh, click this instant boost option and advertise this particular blog post. So I'm not going to do it on Hisham server fan page. Instead, here's a page I have created for advertisement purpose only. <laughs> there you go. Last post I may, uh, last post was a long time ago, February 23. I need to put something out there. So assumingly, I want to get new leads and customers from my Facebook page. And assumingly, I have connected Instagram account with my Facebook page. Here's what I need to do. I'm not going to reinvent the wheel because the copywriting is already done here. You can take a look. I can put in a new picture and in the in this live lecture, I am going to show you how to boost your particular blog post, a uh, particular Facebook post. Uh, post, so file your text returns, lecture to blogging. Let's see if I can come up with a good picture here. Why do startups fail? Who cares about startups failing? 16 years old entrepreneur. Uh, aha. This picture was sent to me by someone uh, and uh, I really like this. I mean, so much for my, for my self-esteem. And then the hero on the right hand side. 
And the girl says, Thoda menga wala. And then, yours truly. <laughs> All on a lighter note, of course. Uh, seems like we'll have to go to pixels.com and download a picture. So instead of wasting my time here, I'm going to go to pixels.com. And uh, on pixels.com, I can search for, let's say, website design. Fine. Let's save that picture. Upload it here. There you go. That's a picture. I have already copied the statement here. I want to put as a as a title uh, as a description of this particular uh, picture post. And now I'm going to fix the content here. Get your, get your new redesigned e-commerce shopping website today. Okay, that's for the title. New Year giveaway. It's not New Year anymore. This line doesn't make any sense. As a matter of fact, February was not New Year either. Amazing offers for offer for new customers. Amazing offer for first-time customers. I'm widely used in Pakistan. <laughs> and then, you know, uh, I mean, first time customers really doesn't make any sense. I mean, uh, they're new, right? But in Pakistan, we commonly use this term, first time customers. Best time to get your new website. Okay. So what else do we have in hard offer? The offer ends on the weekend. Okay, let's show. Let's end this offer next weekend as well. So looking at the calendar, the next weekend seems to be 27th of 27th March. Twenty-seventh March. Okay. Eighty-five percent discount. One year free domain and hosting. Uh, let's just Capitalize the hosting here. Yeah. Mobile friendly website, free website designs to choose from. Two website designs to choose from. Free custom designs. Let's give them a reason to contact us further if they see our ad. SEO consultation free. Rank your website faster in Google. Okay. Money back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, 100% refund. No questions asked. Best ever return on investment. Okay, that's fine. And then I would put the contact us line uh, in a separate, uh, a separate statement. I think this looks good, right? Looks pretty promising, huh? I am going to. Publish this particular image here. There you go. Post. There you go. So after I have posted this image, there are two ways I can advertise using Facebook. A, I need to go to uh, business manager and then uh, advertise this particular post. And the second is, I'm not sure how can I remove the tag here. If I zoom out, I'll see the option. Thought so. I see the cross option here. So if I refresh the page, I do not even have to refresh the page. There you go. That's a blog post. I have, uh, that's a Facebook post I have just published. And if I zoom out further, I'll be able to see the boost button as well. <laughs> Facebook does not work effectively when you zoom in for a strange reason. I don't know why. Somehow it uh, ends up eating basic things. So there you go. I've got the boost po post button now. There are two ways I can advertise this particular Facebook post. A, by clicking on this boost button that says boost post. 
and uh, by filling in some basic information, I can advertise it to uh, the targeted audience. And the other way is to advertise it uh, using the um, Facebook business page. So if I go to business.facebook.com, loading as we speak, this particular uh, point requires a lot of attention, folks. If you pay a lot of close attention, only then you'll be able to understand the importance of using Facebook business page. There you go. So now on this Facebook business page, I uh, I get to see the ad section on the left hand side. If I click on the ad section, it shows me all the previous ads I have paid Facebook. And uh, if I scroll all the way to the bottom, here's the ads manager option. I click on the ads manager option. It opens in a new tab. I, let me cut it and paste it in the tab that is shared with you and hopefully you'll be able to see it now that's where the magic happens if you click on the cre uh, unfortunately let me put a disclaimer first before i uh, initiate this advertisement process unfortunately facebook business platform is not the best way for live streaming uh, because when i zoom in uh, it, it sort of like loses all the responsiveness. So if I click on the create button, that's what you see on a pop-up. Let's see what happens when I zoom in. So far, so good, <laughs> actually. Not bad. Not bad, yeah. There you go. Now, if you want to advertise on Facebook, there are three things you have to consider. A, the campaign. B, ad setting, and then the C is ad. A campaign is basically a campaign. So for example, if I want to advertise all the free or paid website design and development, um, and I want to get leads, I can create one campaign and name it as website development. Now inside campaign, you can have different ad sets, uh, ad objectives, ad campaigns. So for example, let's just for a re for a discussion sake, assumingly the main campaign objective, the main campaign is all about advertising your web design business. Inside the, the, the ad, uh, uh, different uh, ad campaigns I can create different ad campaigns for example I can create an ad campaign about uh, graphic design promotion I can create a campaign about WordPress promotion I can create a different ad uh, objective of let's say a Shopify promotion and then inside that particular campaign I can have different ad sets so for example if I talk about WordPress promotion that's an ad objective. Inside WordPress uh, ad objective, I can have different ad sets. One would focus on themes. The other could focus on plugins. Uh, then uh, bug fixes, uh, maybe increasing the speed of WordPress, so on and so forth. So the first thing first is you need to choose a campaign objective. And in this case, we are looking for video views or, uh, or, or, or traffic or perhaps lead generation, messages, catalog sales, store traffic. Uh, so you need to, you know, uh, there, there are so many options here and you need to choose your option wisely, right? So in this case, perhaps if I, for a discussion sake, just for a discussion sake, uh, I choose, let's say, engagement, okay? And if I scroll down, it says that, uh, uh, in, uh, for, for what kind of engagement, what types of engagement you're specifically looking for? Are you looking for post engagement? Are you looking for page likes? Or are you looking for even responses? So I, 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 would, uh, I would select post engagement here. And then name your campaign. That's optional for now. But of course, I would like to name my, this is the problem when I zoom in. 
let me click on the create button again. Unfortunately, it's not user friendly. And if I zoom in, wherever I click, and there you go, source of gold goes out. Oh, okay, let's give it one last chance. So I would like to get engagement. Hey, what about conversions? Let's select conversions. And if I scroll down, it's, it is telling me that show your ads to people who like to take valuable actions like making a purchase or adding payment info. Okay, name your campaign. I'm going to carefully scroll down. And uh, that's, that's, that's the whole, whole package you need to understand. So campaign has different ad sets and different ad sets have different ads, right? So for example, the campaign is uh, website development campaign. Ad set is sell website development. And then the particular ad would be uh, sell website ad. The main campaign name is website development campaign. And uh, uh, the spelling does not make any difference. But uh, as a perfectionist, I would like to rectify my mistake here. One campaign can have multiple ad sets. And one ad set can have multiple ads just like the example I've given you. So uh, I'm going to click on continue button. Hopefully it will take me to the next slide where I can talk about my ad. So website development campaign is my campaign name and the scroll button button goes out. So unfortunately I have to zoom out in order to get the scroll button and uh, you have to live with it before I get so exasperated that I give up. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, I mean, uh, so the campaign name is given, the campaign objective. Now, that is where we need to talk about the uh, campaign objective. So campaign objective is conversions. I can, of course, edit it any, at any point. I can edit the objective of my campaign. And uh, if I further scroll down, it talks about A-B testing. And uh, that's about it. So when I scroll down, I click on next button. Let's see. What options do I get here? But clicking on the next, if you look at the left hand side, now I'm inside the ad set name, sell website development, right? So the campaign was website development campaign and inside website development campaign, if you look at my mouse, the first ad set is sell website development. And I can have multiple ad sets for one campaign. So uh, now that's where uh, we need to worry about uh, giving the specifics, uh, you know, specific directions here. Conversion event location. Yeah, of course, website, which makes sense. And uh, if it's talking about the website, I need to give the website link here as well. Or maybe I talk about Messenger uh, if I don't want to get traffic on on my uh, on my website. Uh, then it is asking me to uh, put in the Facebook pixel. So I click on cr cross and I do not want to have this. Uh, Facebook pixel for now uh, been doing so much testing here that seems like everything is screwed up here but uh, I'll live with that if I further scroll down uh, that's where I need to populate the basic information about the budget as well as the targeted audience so first thing first I'm going to select the budget instead of choosing daily budget I would be inclined to choose lifetime budget so as a select lifetime budget it automatically uh, shows me a number that is 350. And of course, I do not want to spend 350. Uh, but for, for a better uh, result's sake, I would probably go for 30 or uh, budget here. If you look uh, at this right hand section, it is alarming me and uh, warning me that my budget needs to be at least 31 days. And this is because of the start date and end date. I have selected whole one month consisting of 31 days. And Facebook is asking me to at least put $1 a day. And if I, if I uh, uh, put $31 uh, for my lifetime budget, uh, all the error goes away. But I'm, I'm, I'm actually 
pretty comfortable with $31, but I'm not going to run this campaign for good one month. So what do I do? There you go. I'm going to select on this end date box. It opens up a calendar box and I'm going to select, let's say 29th. Oh, I talked about the weekend. No, I talked about the weekend. So it's 22 and uh, the offer automatically ends on 30 anyway. So I select 30th of this month and uh, and then and then and it tells me no it's not actually this month March I, I accidentally selected April so I select 27th of March and so far so good on the right hand side the speedometer uh, it says that my targeted audience is specific here and I can reach my ad the potential reach here is 42 million. Of course, I don't want to show my ad to 42 million. They were good for nothing. So I need to specify my audience here. And how do I do it? I do it by getting to this audience tab. Hey, what is in this? Yeah, that's fine. I will ignore this extra option. So inside this audience tab, that's where the magic happens. I can create new audience or I can select existing audience. If I click on create new, I can create a custom audience based on different attributes. So if I click on custom audience, uh, it says that you can connect with people who have already shown interest in your business or product. Uh, of course, uh, this is a new page, so uh, I would, I would, uh, I would avoid that. If people have uh, watched my video in the past, if they have visited my Instagram account. Now, look at the retargeting options here. Facebook page. So if I click on Facebook page, uh, it, it would target all the people who have visited this Facebook page in past. If they have attended the events in past. If they have visited my Instagram account, of course, I'll have to link my Instagram account with my Facebook page. And uh, there are so many other options here as well. So I'm going to uh, ignore these options for now. And uh, I'm going to search for something that's more unique. So if I click on show more options, uh, it says uh, all the people. And uh, no, I'm not even going to select this as an option. Instead, I'm going to go for people since it is create new audience, uh, search existing audience. I'm going to search for, to, 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 give me a second, give me a second. I want to do something different here. Uh, you know what? I've actually created a lot of lookalike audience, but if I talk about lookalike audience right now, you'll get confused. There's, there's, there's so many, uh, look like uh, audience as well as uh, 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 I'm going to I want to focus on look like audience tomorrow not now because that look like audience segment will confuse you you see a lot of look like audience I have uh, copied the audience from other pages I own or I am a moderator um, uh, on and you know on, on, on in those pages and I can use that particular audience, fetch them here and show my new ad to their audience. And I also can create a lookalike audience as well. I can create custom audience as well. There's so many ways I can do it. But for now, to make it easy, I want to go for a location tab. I think let's make it easy for you guys. So since, I belong, since I'm from Pakistan, I'm going to select Pakistan here. And I can actually include the locations here. So for example, if I scroll down, I can put in the locations here as well. BHA1 Islamabad. There you go. BHA Islamabad phase one. So not only it has allowed me to select the country, but it has specifically given me the location tab as well. And if you notice the audience on the right hand side, it says 52,000 people. 
Of course, I can increase this viewership because right now only one million radius is selected. So people around my one million, one <laughs> so much for million. I apologize and take my words back. One miles. Uh, all I wanted to say was one miles. So if I increase the radius of my targeted audience, so if I take it to let's say three miles, all of a sudden on the right hand side, the audience uh, gets to around 350k people, which is pretty reasonable, right? Still, I'm showing my ad to the people around my radius. This is the kind of liberty. This is the kind of freedom Facebook business ad manager gives you, which unfortunately boost option does not gives you unless and until you create a lookalike audience or you create a custom audience and you save it and then you pull that saved audience. Uh, in your boosted post. Okay, so uh, there you go. This looks pretty promising. Now for the age, an 18 year old would probably not make a decision. So I'm going to select between 20 to 65. I wonder if people over 60 use Facebook. Uh, in some cases, I'm, I'm sure they, they, they do, but uh, I would like to keep the age slot between 20 and 60. Then in the genders column, I'm going to select men only. What happens? Look, whatever I do on this in the center column will reflect a change in this right hand side column. So right now it says 310 K people. What if I select men? What happens? 230k people, which makes uh, more sense because, uh, you know, I would like to show my ad to the people who are probably a decision makers. And unfortunately, I live in an area where people don't use Facebook. I can show you uh, with, with the schools such as city and routes. Um, you can find these schools in abundance in these areas. A lot of Gen, Gen Z uh, teenagers. They don't use Facebook anyway. But anyways, I'm going to select men. Detailed targeting expansion, I'll keep it on as default. All languages, I can put in my languages as well. So I'll keep it as all languages. And then connections, all type of people. And so far, so good. I really like, like this particular audience here. And uh, what happens next is I can choose the placement. Now, that's an interesting part. By default, Facebook automatically selects automatic placements, which means that it. Uh, uh, Dr. Asma, look, if I am a tutor, you are a PhD doctor, right? And it's a very important question. So therefore, I'm going to print your question on the screen. Imagine I'm a tutor and I'm selling uh, my tuition services. I am an academy that is looking for students from a specific location. Facebook allows me to target the people living in the radius. Now, assumingly, students do not use Facebook. Their parents do, right? Mother and father, they would definitely use Facebook. And by specifying a particular uh, radius where I want my ad to be shown, I'll be targeting those parents as well. And when they see my ad, when they see the picture, when they see the copywriting, naturally they'll be inclined to either visit my website or send me an inbox message. Or perhaps if I uh, put in my WhatsApp number, they can contact me on WhatsApp. So you're giving yourselves a chance of reaching out to a targeted audience. The reason why you specify your radius is you want to reach out to a targeted audience. I hope it makes sense. And same goes for real estate business. Same goes for brick and mortar business. For example, I'm a barber and I got my shop in one particular uh, you know, area. I would like to show my ad to the people perhaps in one miles radius around me. So they get to know that there is a barber who is offering this 
amazing service. He looks after hygiene of their customers, all the products this, this particular barber uses, they are all still lives. It's a Corona free environment where they wear mask and nobody gets in uh, without a mask. Look at myself. What am I doing here? <laughs> Explaining the hygiene process. <laughs> so for the placement, I will keep it automatic. But if you select the manual placement, it will give you six options here. Four precisely for this page, but usually there are six. So six options you, you get are Facebook, Instagram, Audience Network, Messenger, WhatsApp, and then of course, uh, Instagram DM. So since I've not connected my Instagram and my WhatsApp, it's not giving me the options, but I would still go for automatic placement. On the right hand side, in the estimated daily results column, it shows me how many people I'll be able to reach out to every single day. So the range is between 2K to 6K, which makes a lot of uh, sense, right? Okay, uh, what else do we have here? Uh, okay, now the last column, of course, let it go. Uh, even though it is self-explanatory, you can select your budget and uh, you can you can you can optimize the ad delivery, but I will leave it as it is. There's one thing you need to understand, folks. If you want to get better results for your Facebook ads, I would request you to try different ads within one ad set. The reason why I say so is because sometimes you find out that a video gets more engagement than a picture. Sometimes you find out that a long video gets more engagement than a short video, so on and so forth. So always be prepared to spend in your money if you want to get good results about your Facebook advertisement. And of course, if I had interlinked or connected my Instagram account with this Facebook page, automatically the same post would get uh, published or the same ad would get published and people on Instagram uh, will see my ad. Okay, so now I have selected the radius, I have selected the budget, and uh, uh, so far, so good, right? And uh, okay. There's, there's, there's one thing missing here. I can actually drop the pin here, but uh, not worried about it for a second. Instead, I am going to look for the interest column here. And uh, there you go. Let's see if I can find it. Sometimes when I zoom in, things do not show. So show more placements if I I select this show more placement, that's fine. Uh, I don't see it. Detailed targeting expansion, that's uh, uh, automatically turned as selected by default. Uh, and I have given the location as well. People living in this location uh, for a strange reason, and I don't know why, I don't see the interest column here. Hey, Facebook. You gone nuts here? <laughs> okay, let's see. Maybe I'm missing it. So I click on the include. Nothing in there. Yeah, bugs. Gender, detailed targeting. There you go. Edit. <laughs> so there you go. It was, it was uh, uh, not selected. So Dr. Asma has asked a very interesting question, and she is asking. I have specified the radius. I want my ad to be shown to, of course, people with Facebook account, regardless of the gender, regardless of their age limit. But what if I want to identify an interest here? So the so the way there's one way you can do it is by populating the different interest here by clicking on the browse button, by clicking on the interest section, you'll be able to identify a lot here. People who are 
interested in entertainment people are interested in business industry for example if i um if i want my ad to be shown to real estate people uh, give me a second <sighs> there you go real estate so when i click on the real estate if people have shown interest in real estate in the past all the people with this particular interest will be able to see my ad if i uh, remove it and let's go to freelancing so if i select fiverr a lot of people show uh, fiverr in their interest uh, so therefore the people with this particular interest would be able to see my ad if i am looking for graphic designers graphic designer there you go graphic design if I select graphic design, again, uh, I can select uh, or and then reach out to the people who have interest in graphic design. And the algorithm is so smart, so smart that it not only uh, puts it inside the interest tab, but also shows the hierarchy here. So the hierarchy for graphic design is interest, business, industry, and then design. This was for you, Dr. Asma, <laughs> if you want to reach out to your targeted audience, right? So, uh, of course, it optimizes your ad uh, and it helps in a long way. If I go back to all gender, 310K people uh, will be shown my ad and I can actually reduce or increase the budget here as well. Because honestly speaking, $30 is good for nothing. I mean, don't give yourself a chance of uh, uh, getting huge conversions for $30, which is like... Uh, how much is $30 in pack rupees? Can someone do math for me? Knowing that pack rupee uh, is getting, um, you know, a little stronger recently uh, in comparison with US dollar. I think it was 55? Yeah, 156. 156 into 30, whatever your math says, I'll live with it. This is it. Now, here's the Facebook pixel part. I spoke about this in my last lecture, and I'm going to discuss that shortly. But for now, we will leave it. I would, uh, uh, since it looks pretty promising, I'm going to click on the next button. And in this part, I have to provide the ad here, right? So what happens if people select my ad? Where do they go? <laughs> they go to okay Instagram. I don't have any Instagram account, so I'm uh, I'm, I'm 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 not worried about uh, cross-linking the platforms here. And if I click on uh, the ad, heading description, okay. Seems like I'm going to spend another 35 minutes doing this. So the <laughs> I can actually use existing template if you allow me rather than creating all this. Um, existing template would uh, show me the pop of Facebook. Let me select the existing ad here. L lots of options here. I mean, I mean, if you look at the uh, options here. Here's the media. You can select images, videos. You can create a slideshow, which is a cursor. You can upload a single image, or you can select uh, uh, <laughs> I hate this part because it, it's, it's, it's so troublesome here. Uh, call to action, send message. OK, so far, so good. And uh, let's see if I still get a chance to upload my existing template. It seems like I'll have to click on advanced setup and confuse you further about the process, which I don't want to do, of course. So start conversions and 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 and. Need to zoom out, I guess. There you go. 
one way is to recreate it here all together from scratch and I don't do this okay create template add name don't do it uh, and if I use I don't want to connect my Instagram with this, so that's an ad setup for now. Uh, use existing post. Uh, it seems like I, I don't know. It, it is not allowing me allowing me to select the existing post. This option is not applicable for some of the selected ads. Uh, is that because? I think I understand the reason. I have so many pages that uh, I often end up screwing a lot of things here. So I need to go back to being guru here for a second. There you go. What happens here? So if I click on create ad, still unable to select the existing post. The option is not, because it's, it is trying to integrate my Facebook page with my, uh, with my existing ad. So what happens is, I have to recreate it from the scratch and uh, I don't see any problem why we can't do it let's do it folks so marketing let's not worry about anything else create ad okay I'm gonna create an ad single image of course I select a single image I scroll down I add media by clicking on an ad image button and uh, I can either not sure if you see the screen on the pop-up yes you do yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna upload it by clicking upload. I click on the website design ad, I click on open. I'm gonna go back to the tab here and copy the text I have already populated and post it here. Simple as that. Who cares about being not able to select an existing post. I've selected this image, click on the next button. Uh, for the best results, of course, I would, uh, I would pick square, which doesn't make any sense. So I'll, give, uh, I'll go with vertical, which doesn't make any sense. So I'll go with horizontal, which does make sense. So I'll select the horizontal one. Click on the done button. And that's about it. Now the text needs to be populated here. Primary text and headline. If you notice, uh, let me zoom in. I should be fine now since, uh, yeah, there you go. Now, whatever I do, you will see the changes in this box where it shows me the prefix uh, preview of my ad. So primary text is, Get your new website. Notice the changes taking place in the title. Get your new website today. Headline, chat and messenger. I, I, I'll leave it as it is. And uh, do I see another scroll here? Not for this column. So much for Facebook responsiveness. So I'll have to zoom out for a second. Here's a description I paste in the description I put in the original tech, uh, original post and uh, so far so good. Chat in Messenger headline, contact us today. Chat in Messenger is changed with contact us today and get your new website today. Amazing offer. Limited time only, maybe. Limited time only. There you go. There you go. So you see the title is nicely populated. So is the picture and then the send message and then everything looks good. Absolutely good for a Facebook ad. If I scroll all the way to the bottom, and of course I will keep the conversions as uh, start conversions rather than advanced setup because that would be pretty, uh, pretty confusing for everybody. And, uh, I'm going to click on the publish button. Publishing one of three, publishing two of three, publishing three of three. 
And uh, now, based on the process I have uh, implemented, after a while, I will get an email from Facebook telling me if my ad is approved or rejected. <clears throat> so it says one ad set and one ad weren't published because of errors. Now, it, you know, I need to find out what were the specific errors here. It's, 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 it's more because I selected the Instagram and, uh, and then Facebook. Okay. One last shot. Boosting option is far better than, you know, going through this setting up the ad uh, inside business manager. But again, it gives you uh, far advanced targeting options. Okay. So view details. I click on view details and uh, I click on fix errors. And what do I get? Again, the conversion Facebook pixels. And I want to select Facebook pixels here. Uh, because I was unable to set up my Facebook pixel uh, conversion event for now, I'm just selected as contact. Now, the same ad will not be shown to. So, for the conversion, I'm, what happens if I select website? It is again. At the end of the day, unless and until I end up and finish my Facebook pixel, uh, I will not be able to publish my ad, uh, which of course is sad, but I'll have to paste the small, <laughs> the small, you know, uh, code and make sure that I'm able to retarget all the audience I may, uh, you know, I want to reach out to. So how do I do it? I click on the publish uh, draft items. Of course, yeah, publish draft items. Put it in publish, save it. And let's, for our discussion sake, goes to, let's just go to the events manager and see how can we implement Facebook pixels. I'm not going to do it, but I'm going to show you. And after fixing this problem, you'll be able to uh, advertise. So uh, last time around in cohort two, I uh, on this on this specific page, uh, digital marketing three sixty five. That's how you set up your Facebook pixel. So if I click on the events in my business Facebook manager, I'll have to manually add this code onto my website. So if I click on install code manually by clicking on installing code. I click on copy code and by pasting this in the header of my website that it, 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 it tells you to paste the pixel code in the bottom of the header section just above the head tag. So I will have to paste it on my website before I am able to use Facebook pixel since I have initiated the process unless and until you see the green bot uh, icon on the left top says create pixel. So since I've used it, I am unable to complete my ad. But this is uh, not a problem for now. What if we go back to the original post and boost it from there? There's always other way around to do it. So I'm going to select see more. I've got zillions of pages out there. There you go, digital marketing. Now I'm going to complete my advertisement by clicking on the boost post icon. If I click on the boost post icon, that's what I see. Uh, far less options, of course, but uh, uh, the reason why you see my URL is blocked because I have not completed the Facebook pixel setup. But I'll, 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 I'll uh, you know, ignore it for a second. What options do I get here? I want people to send me message and uh, what else I can select the targeted audience here people I choose through targeting so for example if I click on people I choose through targeting and I click on edit by clicking on the pencil 
it tells me all the audience I have selected. Of course, I'll go with men and uh, I am going to go with Pakistan first. Pakistan is a country and all of a sudden my ad will be shown to zillions of people. And then, of course, DHA Islamabad. That's a place, DHA Islamabad. Uh, let's just show our ad to DHA1 Islamabad, maybe. DHA Islamabad phase one. Uh, less than 1,000 people. So it means uh, I'm going to select DHA Islamabad. Okay, same problem. Uh, add Pakistan as a country first. I just select anything else. You already see the bugs here, right? So buggy this time around. <laughs> oh, there you go, finally selected. Come on. There you go. I've selected a unique place in Philippines. For the first time, I know that there's a place called Pakistan in Philippines. Islamabad, Pakistan. There you go. Islamabad, Islamabad, capital territory, Pakistan. Thank you very much. So much for the favor, Facebook. Um, this was not buggy in the cohort one and two. Everybody must have noticed. Somehow, somehow it, is, it has gone a little too buggy here. But uh, that's not for me to worry about. So uh, I'll be able to show my ad to 590k people, which looks pretty promising, right? And uh, I can also select detailed targeting here by clicking on the browse button, uh, by closing the McDonald and Facebook and only selecting, let's say, let's say graphic design. So graphic design is an interest and uh, this looks good. I click on confirm and uh, my ad will be shown to how many people? 1,600 people who also have interest in McDonald and KFC. So what if I remove McDonald and KFC? And uh, that's about it. Why? Well, you know, there you go. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, radius. Now I lose the radius option as well. There you go. Thank you, Facebook, for screwing things up so nicely. And uh, what if I show my ad to graphic design? There you go. So Islamabad Capital Territory, graphic design, 3,400 people. I click on Save Audience. And uh, this looks good now, thankfully. I want to spend, let's say, $10 here. I want to show my ads for next uh, seven days. So if I increase my budget to $15, and there you go, I deselect the Facebook pixel finally. And now I should be able to post my ad because I see this blue button now. So for $15, I'll, you know, after having targeted the audience I'm looking for, if I click on see all preview options, this is my ad. Uh, that's how it will look like on Facebook, uh, on mobile, as well as uh, if I've got my Instagram connected on my Facebook stories. And uh, let's just click on the boost post button now. $15 for seven days. So if I click on boost post button now, hopefully this should get submitted now. And remember, if my Instagram account was integrated or linked in, linked with my Facebook, uh, it would automatically get cross posted on Instagram. So now it says that your ad is being created. We'll let you know if you meet our advertisement policy, so on and so forth. And who cares about what else? No, it was not 16 only. It was 340K. The reason why it seems like a bug in Facebook. Uh, I mean, that's how it looks like. The difference between using Facebook page manager and the difference between boosting a post is actually there's a huge difference. Business ad manager gives you a lot of option to target. It tells you, as, as you have seen, it 
lets you target people on the basis of your ads. You can create new ads. Um, you can you can specify your budget. You can give the lifetime budget and so on and so forth. Whereas in the case of uh, Boost only, it gives you a quick start options. Does not let you specify targeted options. But at the end of the day, all is well that ends up well. This is Facebook. Use Facebook ad option only if you are unable to build your organic outreach. Now, when you talk about Instagram, give me a second. Give me a second. Oh, this post is doing so good. 364 uh, likes and 12 comments and 23 shares with 3,000 views already. Amazing, huh? I think this mobile would be far too small. <clears throat> Let's go to this one. Instagram. So on Instagram, uh, to begin with, that's how the platform looks like. Of course, everybody knows Instagram. And you can advertise on Instagram. <clears throat> to begin with, let me show you my profile. That's my Instagram profile. Now, <clears throat> the best way of scaling up your Instagram profile is you put in a lot of posts and every post needs to have hashtag. Hashtag is pretty much self-explanatory, right? I mean, if I go to my screen again, and if I search for, let's say, what do I search for? Instagram hashtags. I search Google for Instagram hashtags. Let's see what do I get here. Okay. Best hashtags. If you want to generate right hashtags for your post, depending on your niche, depending on your category. For example, I am into freelancing, right? So I click on, uh, how do I remove this bottom scroll? This bottom bar here. Who cares about this bottom bar anyway? Best hashtag. So if I click on search here, thank you ads for further adding fuel to my, my my frustration here. It's been a long day anyway. So I I'm able to search for something. So if I click on freelancing and I search for the hashtags for freelancing by typing in the keyword freelancing, what do I get here? I just want to remove this part here and I know how do I do it. Seems like, a, there you go, all the hashtags for freelancing. I can copy it and I can paste it on my post. So always remember, if you want to get an organic outreach for your different Instagram post, make sure you use relevant hashtags that are relevant and related to your Instagram post, be it a picture or be it a video. Because by using the hashtags or appropriate hashtags, you will be able to show up in search results for that particular hashtag. So for example, I use all these freelancing hashtags and I put in a picture on my Instagram account if someone searches for, let's say, a freelancer hashtag, how do they do it? Simple. Let's just come back to the screen here and let's see what happens here. 
So uh, this is my Instagram and uh, I search for freelancing. When I search for freelancing, it shows me different options on a top. It is asking me to select accounts. It is showing tags option as well as places option. So if I click on the tags option, now all the freelancing and freelancing tags will show up inside this particular tag section. I select the very first one, freelancing. Now this is where I will be able to see all the different Instagram blog posts for this particular hashtag freelancing. Now imagine if you have just uploaded a picture and you have used this hashtag freelancing, you'll be able to show up in search results. So for example, here's a picture I uploaded a couple of hours ago. I'm going to edit this picture and use the hashtag freelancing. So I edit it and then a day out and then I use the hashtag freelancing. Right. Now, after selecting the hashtag freelancing, I submit the done button and let's see if this post shows up for the hashtag we were searching for. So assumingly someone searches for the hashtag freelancing and uh, somewhere in, the, in this in this uh, hashtag, I'll be able to come up in the search results since it's an old post, but still I, I show up. If you look at the, there you go. If you look at this left hand section, now I'll be able to get lots of new followers for this hashtag. I'll be able to advertise my business organically without paying a single penny to the people who are looking for web freelancing. Now freelancing is just one keyword. What if you use the keywords such as web design, web development, graphic designing, content writer. And here's another spin to the concept here. If you search for this particular keyword freelancing, nine out of 10 times, there's a good chance that only the businesses would be using this particular keyword. So for example, if you are looking for web development clients, if you are looking for uh, gra graphic designing clients, if you offer digital marketing, if you offer social media marketing, if you are, if you've got a blog and you are looking for sponsorship offers, instead of focusing on the hashtags that define your business, how about focusing on the hashtags where you can find potential clients from? So for example, if I'm into web development bus business, instead of, Focusing on a hashtag freelancing or web design or web development. How about focusing on the hashtags uh, restaurants, hotels, uh, small businesses. This way, when the small businesses post something on face on Instagram and they see my Instagram post featuring in top 10 results for a particular hashtag, they might just not only they would click on my ad, but they might just send me a DM, a direct message inquiring about my services. So don't focus on your uh, on, on the hashtags that define your business. I mean, don't overkill it. Using it, uh, you know, relevantly uh, in, in a modest uh, scale of one to 10, be it four or five makes sense. But if you only focus on these hashtags, your competitors will see you, but your business, but your clients will not be able to find you. And the reason why your clients will not be able to find you is because they're not searching for hashtag freelancing. They probably would be searching for web development. They probably would be searching for graphic designer. They probably would be searching for hotels, best hotels, best hotels deals, uh, best restaurant deals. And if you show up for these hashtags, uh, you give yourself relatively a better chance of being found. 
This is it for Facebook, Facebook ad, Facebook organic outreach, and also for Instagram. And uh, this is how you scale up your presence on Facebook as well as on Instagram. I hope it makes sense. If it does, drop in your eyes. Meanwhile, let me look at this WhatsApp message. Uh, the sender has been getting on my nerves for not responding. People often do not realize that uh, if someone doesn't respond, they might just be busy. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, the, the, the business ad part got a little messy here, but that's fine. I mean, because of the pixels. So tomorrow we're going to uh, brainstorm further into Instagram, talk about Instagram stories, talk about Instagram IGTV. Then we are going to discuss Pinterest uh, and then we are going to discuss Clubhouse. That is it for tomorrow. Thank you very much and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye for now.